Hello friends, today I'll be discussing the International Code on Intact Stability 2008 and I would try to simplify the code with examination point of view. I'll share the intact stability requirement for various ships and make a short comparison so that it can be easily remembered during exams. The intact stability code includes fundamental principles such as general precautions against capsizing, criteria regarding metacentric height and writing lever, weather criteria, effect of free surface effect, icing, watertight integrity. The code also addresses operational aspects like information for the master, including stability and operating booklets, and operational procedures in heavy weather. Basically, the intact stability code sets out conditions which must be complied with and demonstrated by the master on a GZ curve before the ship sails out at sea. I would now be discussing the stability criteria for five different ships to easily memorize the whole concept. You can download this comparison sheet with the text from the link given in the description. First I'll be discussing the stability criteria for oil tankers, passenger ships and other cargo ships. These three ships share the same stability criteria except some additions for passenger ships. And as you can see in the GZ curve, the requirement is the area under the writing lever shall not be less than 0.055 meter radian up to 30 degrees, 0.09 meter radian up to 40 degrees or at the angle of down flooding if the angle is less than 40 degrees. Additionally, the area between the angle of heel of 30 degree and 40 degree must not be less than 0.03 meter radian. The writing lever GZ shall be at least 0.2 meters at an angle of heel equal to or greater than 30 degrees. The maximum writing lever shall occur at an angle not less than 25 degrees. And the initial metacentric height GM shall not be less than 15 centimeters. Now these four points are same for passenger ships, tankers and other general ships. For passenger ships, there are certain other criterias in addition to these four and those are the angle of heel on account of crowding of passenger to one side shall be below 10 degrees and the weight assumed of all the passengers shall be 75 kgs. The height of the center of gravity for passengers shall be assumed equal to 1 meters above the deck level and when they are seated 0.3 meters above the seat in respect of seated passengers. Passengers and luggage shall be considered to be in the space normally at their disposal when assessing compliance with the criteria. In addition, the angle of heel on account of turning shall not exceed 10 degrees when calculated by a certain formula. Now let's talk about the ships carrying timber deck cargo. Before I discuss the criteria, I want you to imagine a normal ship carrying timber on deck and it is carrying it longitudinally. What do you think will happen to the stability of the ship? Obviously there is more freeboard. As you are aware, timber is buoyant in nature, so it will add to additional stability of the ship. Thus, now we will go through the criteria. So this provision applies to all the ships more than 24 meters in length. Now because the ship has more stability, the area under the writing lever curve shall not be less than 0.08 meter radian at the angle of 40 degree. If you remember, in normal ships, at 40 degree, the area required under the GZ curve up to 40 degree was 0.09. So requirement has reduced. Then the maximum value of writing lever shall be at least 25 centimeters. Whereas in the other ships, the writing lever was at least 20 centimeters at an angle of heel greater than or equal to 30 degrees. It may appear at first sight that the value of GZ requirement is more stringent for timber cargo, but remember it's the maximum value of the writing lever in this curve. As you are aware, the timber cargo has the tendency to absorb water or ice creation on the exposed surface as possible. But if we consider these two possibilities beforehand in our calculation, then the requirement of GM would automatically reduce. Thus, at all times during a voyage, 
metacentric height shall not be less than 10 centimeters and if you remember for the normal ships it was 15 cm so 5 centimeters leeway for the gm in timber ships also now because the timber is a deck cargo need to consider the wind and rolling effect on it thus when determining the ability of the ship to withstand the combined effect of wind beam and rolling according to healing weather criteria the 16 degree limiting angle of heel under action of steady wind shall be complied with and the last criteria is the cargo extends longitudinally between the superstructures let's talk about the stability criteria for grade now before i discuss the points imagine what is really the difference between a normal ship and a grain carrier well the grain has the tendency to shift which reduces the gm of the ship so all the stability criteria is now based on this the gz curve for the grain cargo as you can see is created after assuming there has been a grain shift thus the area under the curve automatically reduces considering all this the stability criteria is the angle of heel due to the shift of grain is not to be greater than 12 degrees or the angle at which deck cargo is immersed whichever is lesser the net or residual area between the heeling arm curve and the riding arm curve up to the angle of heel of maximum difference between the ordinates of two curve or 40 degrees or angle of flooding whichever is least in all condition of loading shall not be less than 0.075 meter radian now because the risk has already been considered the area requirement under the gz curve has reduced to 0.075 from 0.09 in normal cases the initial metacentric height after correction for free surface effect of liquids in the tank is not to be less than 30 cm as you can see the initial gm requirement is exactly double of what is normally required on other ships and other conditions are that after loading master shall ensure the ship is upright before proceeding to sea and he should be able to demonstrate the ability of the ship at all stages of the voyage to comply with the stability criteria required by this section i hope you liked this video and it solved your purpose thank you for watching